No, only one D, yes. Yeah. It's annoying, that, isn't it? It is quite annoying, yeah. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 celebrities who went on game shows before they were famous. Yes, there's two girls. Yeah. Coming up 16, coming up 14. Too old for this rubbish. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at celebrities that first appeared on our screens before they became a household name. Let us know in the comments what game show your favorite celebrity has appeared on. Number 10. Amanda Holden – Blind Date while you might know her from Britain's Got Talent and occasional appearances on This Morning, the 50-year-old burst into our lives when she appeared on Blind Date in 1991 and caused quite a stir. My name's Amanda and I'm from London. <laughs> she took part in the dating show hosted by Cilla Black and said that her dream man was Jack Nicholson and insisted on referring to a contestant's supposed fat as love handles. Unsurprisingly, Barry didn't choose Amanda after that comment. Right, Barney. Well, first of all, I'd have to think of a nickname for your podgy bit so you don't feel too embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> when shown this clip on This Morning by Phil and Holly, she was clearly blushing with embarrassment and was more concerned by her appearance all those years ago. Number 9. Simon Amstel, Games Master we mostly know Simon from the comedy show Nevermind the Buzzcocks when he took over as host in 2006. However, Amstel's first television appearance was in 1993 when he appeared as a contestant on the Channel 4 game show Games Master. Together we are the Essex All-Star. Straight from the off, you could see how determined he was, as during a competition, he made it clear to the host that he was after his job and proceeded to take over. I'm actually not going to be a contestant, I'm after your job. After Games Master, he went on the good morning with Anne and Nick, performing an impression of Dame Edna. Everage, which the Buzzcocks cast shared with everyone one episode. Simon! <laughs> Darling! <laughs> Number 8. Stephen Fry – University Challenge You'd be hard-pressed to find someone who doesn't know Stephen Fry. The 64-year-old has been on our TV screens for over four decades now. However, his first appearance was on an episode of University Challenge, representing Queen's College. Um. <laughs> Just, how are you? It, it's, I'm never gonna be matter. What? Walter Matter. He showcased a classic bit of waffle and has since gone on to mock his appearance on the show. Since then, Fry has gone on to be one half of the comedic double act Fry and Laurie, star in Blackadder, host QI, and narrate all of the Harry Potter books. But those examples only scratch the surface of an iconic career. Number 7. Stephen Merchant, Blockbusters And Steve, Steve Merchant, where are you from? From Bristol. Ah, popular city. The Bristolian is definitely one of the most underrated comedians the UK has produced, having written iconic series like The Office, Extras and Idiot Abroad alongside Ricky Gervais. Steve, uh, heptathlon? Not the heptathlon. I can hardly say that, but it isn't that anyway, so I will give the full question to Rupam and Claire. However, we first caught a glimpse of the tall genius on an episode of Blockbusters. Despite showcasing his intellect, he didn't end up winning, but after his appearance in 1997, his career has not stopped. With the works previously mentioned, an award-winning podcast, multiple film and TV appearances, stand-up tours, and he's now co-producing Lip Sync Battle with The Office star John Krasinski. That's why. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Number 6. Simon Cowell – Sale of the Century Please welcome Simon Cowell. Hello, Simon. How are you? Simon Cowell is as big as they come. In the UK and the US, he's run iconic shows like Britain's Got Talent, American Idol and The X Factor, whilst also being known managing music acts like Westlife, One Direction and Susan Boyle. Button, cup and flat are all varieties of which edible fungus. Simon. Mushroom. Mushroom's right, you got the lead again. But you'll be shocked to learn that the 62-year-old's first TV cameo was on the TV show Sale of the Century back in 1990. On the show, he ended up winning £20 worth of kitchen utensils, so nothing to write home about. 
but he showcased his general knowledge and his love for go-karting. And if you have an absolute D-Day in a toy shop somewhere, it's nice, isn't it? Brilliant. Very, very neat indeed. Bear that yeah. one in mind as well. There's a ton more temptation on the sale, including our top prize. Martin, tell him what we've got. Number five, Alex Horn. Countdown. Alex Horn is a writer and stand-up comic from Chesham in Buckinghamshire. Taskmaster is a favourite here in Britain. Created by Alex Horn and hosted by Greg Davis, the show pits a number of celebrities and comedians against each other in a series of obscene challenges. However, Alex came very late into the celebrity world as he first became known to people when he was a contestant on Countdown back in 2008. Can I get a consonant, please? Thank you, Alex. Said. Cool. Can I get another consonant, please? <laughs> The 43-year-old managed to win three games before being defeated on the fourth. But one staggering bit of information that came from his time on the show was his quest to meet a person from every UN country in London. Sadly, he was three short of the 192 targets. And Alex got nine times seven, 75 plus yep. two. Yeah, uh, six and five plus two, six, seven, seven, yes. Oh, can, can we yeah. get it, Carol? I'm sure it's possible I didn't get it. I did all these. Number four, Ollie Mers. Deal or no deal? Ollie Mers' career has been quite the roller coaster. What do you got there? Just a good luck card. Having worked in a call centre, he appeared on the iconic game show Deal or No Deal, where despite only winning a tenner, the host Noel Edmonds envisioned a big future for the Essex boy and how right he was. No deal. He went on to perform on The X Factor and his success on the show catapulted his music career as he has since had four number one singles and made six albums. He returned to Deal or No Deal in 2012 in a celebrity version, which made him the only person to appear on the show twice, and despite his newfound career, he only won 50p. Yeah. Unbelievable. Number three, Mark the Beast. Who wants to be a millionaire? This is Mark Labette, who's six foot six. He comes from Newport in Wales and is a supply teacher. The Beast is one of the most recognisable faces on our TV screens and finds himself in many a living room at 5 o'clock when the chase comes on. However, his rise to fame took quite a while, but he's been on your TV more times than you'd think. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £2,000. Thank you very much. The Beast appeared on Mastermind in 1999 and again in 2000, with The Olympics and The Simpsons respectively as his specialist subjects. He went on to compete on Countdown in 2000, narrowly losing his first game on a crucial conundrum. He then appeared on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, winning £32,000 in 2006. You've still got £32,000. The right answer is Denmark. I'm really sorry. Number two, Katie Hopkins, The Apprentice. Katie Hopkins is one of the most controversial political commentators out there and her entrance into the world of TV was no easy ride. She entered The Apprentice in 2007, and throughout the show, she caused a stir through offensive comments. I think it's more important to get my plans in place first. But one episode, she had admitted to having an affair with a married man, an act that sparked fury up and down the country. She turned down a place in the final, citing childcare problems as the reason. Since the show, she has gone on to write for The Sun and The Daily Mail, is now banned on Twitter, and joined UKIP in 2021. No surprises there. Number 1. Sir Tom Moore Blankety Blank Sir Thomas Moore was one of the stories during the first lockdown. The former British Army officer planned to do 100 lengths of his garden in time for his 100th birthday, with the goal of raising £1,000. Tom Moore, how are the melodies? Oh, fine. That's good. And where are you from? Tips End. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place. However, by the time his goal had been reached, he had raised over £30 million for the NHS and was the nation's sweetheart, an achievement that meant he was knighted by the Queen in July of last year. Those of a certain age might have already seen Captain Tom on their TV screens as he appeared on the Christmas version of Blankety Blank in 1983. Rest in peace, Sir Tom. He saved himself by grabbing hold of his partner's tights. Tights. 
you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.